Welcome to the Williamsville Public Library and Museum. Today is Wednesday, August 23rd, and we're here to talk to Bob Black about his life in Williamsville and a little bit about Black Hardware. Do you want to just start out, Bob, by telling us about your family, like growing up? I grew up in, I was born in Williamsville and grew up there, lived in several different places, including one right across the street where the Tornado took the house, and now they've got two houses built on the property. And uh, went to went to grade school here, in the school which I tore down. Right. And uh, I graduated out of high school, luckily. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, was married and had four children and had a very good life. Did you have any brothers and sisters growing up? I had uh, two sisters. Okay. Uh, my oldest sister is uh, still alive. She's 91, and okay. she's in a home in. Uh, Red Cloud, Nebraska. My other sister, Mary is deceased. What did your parents do when you were growing up? My parents ran a grocery store called West Food Store. It was located right on the west side of the old bank building. And I, I don't know what year they started running it or anything, but they ran it until the time that my dad left to go to the, into the hardware business. What kind of lessons do you think you learned growing up with your parents running their own business? A lot of lessons. He uh, always taught us to be respectful to older people. My dad made a point to make sure that if somebody passed away, he would take me with him when he made the visitation. Because he would say, if you respect them when they're alive, you should respect them when they're dead. Since you grew up in this area, do you still have some of your friends that you played with, that you did things with, that are still in the area? Oh, yes. Like when I live right across the street, down the block was uh, the Fawns family, mm -hmm. and they had the three boys down there, George Jr. And, and Bill. And we had ball games going on out here in the street every day. You know, <laughs> we raised up with some of the Curry boys and yeah, Gene Chirac. Aside from the playing the ball with your friends, are there... Any other memories from growing up with your friends, things that you like to do for fun? What else you guys did when you had some free time? Well, we uh, we had all had bicycles, and we spent a lot of hours a day on bicycles. A lot of people probably don't remember that up there north of the, where they sell the lime and stuff, when they was building Route 66, they had a huge rock pile. And uh, we used to take our bicycles up there and push them up on the south end and get on them and ride them down. Very seldom did anybody go down the north end because it was higher and steeper. And by the time you hit the bottom, even with your brake on, it's dangerous. So we did ride our bikes every day. We were Patterson Brothers. There was a stairway in the back of it. Went up to an apartment. And if nobody was around, we'd take our bicycles up there and get on them and down the steps we'd go. Get on your little boys. <laughs> you raised a family here. Did your kids enjoy the same type of activities or did they do other things in their free time? I'm not for sure what the girls did all the time. <laughs> you know, but I know my, my boy did more or less the same kind of thing. He, uh, he come home from school one night and had a bloody nose. My wife asked him what happened. He said, two boys beat me up. Mm -hmm. And she said, she looked out, he went into the garage, he'd come out with the two before. And she said, what are you going to do? He said, I'm going back. He never knew what happened. But do they all still live in the area around here? They, uh, they all went to school here in Williamsville. And they all graduated here in Williamsville. Two oldest girls went to college over at Western. And uh, our oldest daughter is retired from the telephone company, and she's living in Hawthorne, New York, with her daughter and kids. Her second daughter, Diane live here out on the farm and, and they they got race horses rick is down the same road as her only a different direction he works at a place in springfield called richardson's manufacturing and the youngest daughter is married and she has two two daughters and she lives in grand rapids michigan do you do some traveling to see your family or do they come to you we used to go see all of them till we got older and yeah. Uh, it used to be they uh, they all all would come on Christmas. All the kids, the grandkids, and great grandkids would be here on Christmas. Mm -hmm. and my youngest grandson was the last grandson, the last of the grandkids, and everybody would get a bed with him. <laughs> and he had to either sleep in the recliner or on the floor or something. Mm -hmm. And he went this one year. He said, "Grandma," he said, "the next time I come down." I'm going to rent a lady to come with me and maybe I can get a bed. <laughs> Speaking of memorable things, 
as you were in your adult life here in Williamsville, what kind of organizations were you involved in? What kind of community organizations were you a part of in Williamsville? At one time, we, wife and I was fairly active in the Methodist Church, and I was the president of the Methodist Church Men's Club. There was a Masonic Lodge here in town, of which my father was a member, and I joined it, and I'm on my 65th year with it. You know, and uh, I was a, the fire department was formed in 1958, and I was one of the first members of it. And as far as I can remember now, I'm the only living one that's still alive after it was formed. And uh, I was with it from 58 till 1983. You're one of the originals. Yes. Speaking of things that are original, Williamsville is fairly well known for its events. We have a lot of important community events. Are there any that you remember specifically, like? the 1953 centennial or the 100-year-old birthday of Uncle Jake or anything else that happened in town that really sticks out in your memory? Well, the centennial does, 1953, because that happened to be the year we, we graduated from high school. And we, uh, centen and the centennial celebrations was all over, and uh, my dad and mom and my sister Mary Lee and I went to, down around Waco, Texas, down in there. That's where my oldest sister was, but that's her husband, and he was in the Air Force. And we went across the ferry, and we got off the ferry. I was driving, and I looked in the mirror, and I saw a car turn around and come up behind us real fast. He blinked his lights, and I pulled over. It was a fellow from here in Wayneville, Albert Curry. The reason he knew us, my dad had a 50 Chevrolet, and right on the front of the hood, it had the Wayneville Centennial. What about on a grander scale in terms of like national events? Were there any wars or international events that stick out in your memory that were significant when you were growing up or even as an adult in Williamsville? I don't remember too much about the Second World War, except that I lived over there and right across the road was a Phillips 66 station. And anytime we'd blow a tire or something like that, we'd take the rubber over to it and he'd, he'd buy it. And uh, we'd, we'd go around pick up cans or anything we could find to turn into it. But it's, the best I remember of, uh, of the Second World War and of uh, the Korean War and Vietnam, I don't remember anybody from Williamsville being killed. There may have been somebody that I don't remember, but I, just, I don't remember any. Fatality. Well, Mr. Black, I appreciate your time. Uh, thanks for letting us get to know you better. And thanks for sharing your memories of Williamsville with us.